5.35 kilograms. They're giving up 3 kilograms overall. <laughs> 審判員山崎武史三木渡る片岡雅人。Here we go, folks. Live and direct on Flow Grappling. You listen to Stu Fulton and Grant Bogdanov. How are you feeling here today, Grant? I am so excited for this, Stu. Look at these guys. The looks on their faces. They're hyped. It's going to be amazing. Yokohama Arena is in for a treat tonight. PJ Botch stepping in first. 33 years of age, born in Pittsburgh, grew up in Pennsylvania. He has a list of accolades as long as your arm. First place, Emerald City. Invitational 2021, first place on Invitational 3, 2016. First place on Invitational 9, 2018. First place at the Taylor Invitational 10, 2018. And PJ also a quintet veteran. Going up against Tomoshige Sera, 34 years of age, originally from Hiroshima, representing Karti DM, his gym. Uh, but today, I'm pulling down for Kazushi Sakuraba. There we go. We are off. Sera IBJJF Asia Open Silver at Black Belt Featherweight in 2017. This year, he took a victory at ADCC Southeast Asia Open and reached the quarterfinals of the IBJJF American Nationals. He weighed in at 77.5 kilograms, just one kilogram below P.J. Barch. Speaking on accolades and ADCCs, uh, P.J. Barch also holds a victory over two-time ADCC gold medalist J.T. Torres. Indeed. He's an absolute stud. P.J. Barch, the solid wrestling roots through high school. Actually has a 2-0 MMA record. Trained in Sweden under Magnus Hansen, where he got his blue belt, moved to San Diego 2015 and joined Richie's 10th Planet Gym, where he earned his purple, brown, and black belts, respectively. Interesting move by uh, Tomoshi Gesera, right off the bat pulling guard. I guess he didn't want to wrestle with PJ at all. And look, PJ's getting the mount right away. PJ back straight into that mount position, and he's got a solid look at the back here now, Grant. P.J. Barch is very good from the back position. He has a very strong uh, finishing rate here. Sarah's in a little bit of trouble. He needs to keep controlling that top hand and try to turn around and face. Very early on into this first bout here. P.J. Barch pouring on the pressure. Tomoshi Gesera in full defensive mode right now. Yeah, P.J. Barch entered that guard with impunity getting double underhooks and going with a knee cut, which exposed the back here. Now he's got the full body triangle locked in. Things are not looking good for Sarah. It's a horrible position for Sarah. He's doing his best to try and create some space, but constant pressure, constant attacks from the 10th Planet Man, PJ Barch, on the back. Oh, PJ's got a cross face now. He's just going to crank it. He's going to squeeze that in nice and tight. Tomoshige Sarah, what can he do here? Just seconds have past oh, and he's looking over. very very close and there it is surely the tap it is all over and Thomas Gisela forced to give up here PJ Bosch taking the neck home with him yeah at first he put it on the face and then he just slid under the chin amazing work from PJ Bosch uh, unlucky for Thomas Gisela quick work for P.J. Barch in this first bout. He stays on the mat. He's got two minutes to go back to his corner, gather his thoughts, speak to his teammates, listen to some advice from Amir Alam, Eddie Bravo, Matt side there, all members in attendance. You know, the amazing thing about this team is that you've got top athletes in all the other teams, and not to say that these guys aren't, but they're break dancers and school teachers and people who wanted to lose weight that Eddie Bravo brought together and molded into some of the best grapplers on planet Earth. It really is amazing. DJ Barch ready to get back on the mat there, and he faces none other than the living legend, Kazushi Sakuraba. The question is, how does he play it? Does he stick to his game plan, his strengths, or does he try to play Sakuraba his own game? Looking at this replay here, look at that beautiful pass to mount. Sarah tries to escape. Absolutely no space, slide that knee over the belly. 
of Tomoshige Serra. And it was just game over from there. Constant pressure, constant attack. And this is what we know to expect from the team's 10th Planet team. Look at this. Sinks it in tight. Tighter and tighter. Under the chin. Tomoshige Serra has to give up. DJ Bosch ready for bout two now. Still in the first round here today at Quintet 4. Big round of applause for Kazushi Sakuraba as he steps up onto the mat. The living legend himself, 54 years old. Just amazing. Kazushi Sakuraba in his 50s. UFC Japan heavyweight tournament winner in 1997. The Gracie Hunter. The IQ wrestler, UFC Hall of Famer. He's also held the GFC Tag Team Title Championship, his first ever pro wrestling title in 2020. Now, going back to that UFC heavyweight tournament back in 1997, Grant, he, Sakuraba came in as a late replacement for Hiromitsu Kanehara, his senpai, in the 1997 event here in Japan, and made his name. Yes, he did. There was a controversial stoppage in that night, but in that tournament, he came back and submitted the guy who he controversially lost to. What a legend. Early foot sweep from PJ Barch here. Put Sakuraba in, on his back in guard here. PJ showing some respect. Not quite using the same amount of pressure he did in his first match. Standing up from Sakuraba. Yeah, it's good to see PJ Barch having some fun out there with Sakuraba. Yeah, you got to respect the legend, right? 54 years old. PJ looking for a footlock here. Yep. Drops down into it. Sakuraba staying very calm and collected. This is really the mark of his whole career, Grant. The pressure he's been under over all the fighters, all the heavyweights, all the monsters he's faced over the years. He's able to always stay calm and collected. Yeah, talking about the monsters he fought through his run in Pride. He's such a legend, and man, I wasn't even into the scene during the Pride days, but hearing that walkout song and seeing this guy walk out gave me chills. Yep. And today on the show, we have a very special single match. Kazushi Sakuraba's son, Taisei Sakuraba, Sakuraba Jr., making his professional grappling debut here today at Quintet 4. Restart back over the Quintet logo on the mat here. Again, PJ Parch going to work with the pass. Kazushi Sakuraba mentioned the, the word retirement in an earlier segment. He might be looking to pass the torch to his son. Kind of a leg lock battle here. PJ had a good look at a straight ankle lock earlier. Sakuraba, though, staying relaxed, staying super calm. Also threatening those legs. That was nearly a tap. He said, no, he says no. He says no, not a tap. I think PJ could have taken that home right there. He, he, yeah, he, he's showing a lot of respect to the legend. Yeah, this is one of the beauties of go, 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 go. Sakuraba himself, he knows his limitations, he knows his age. He'll still go in there and throw down, he'll still try to win. But it's good to see all these young stars coming in, going up against him and, you know, showing him that respect. Let's go up two here, PJ, you got five and a half. Kazushi Sakuraba, really famous for his low single leg. He's getting a Shido here for inactivity. One Shido for Sakuraba, and of course, in any given bout, three Shidos measure off the mat, and the opponent stays on. And it was because he spoke during the match, actually, not for inactivity. Uh, they gave him that penalty for speaking during the match. <laughs> That's a bit unfair because Sakuraba, he's known to speak during matches. He's always talking, even when training, he's always talking and shouting and laughing. And this is the brainchild of Sakuraba himself. He's the boss. Yep. This referee might be in danger of losing his job after that one. <laughs> referee's got a referee. Back into the action here now, PJ Barch in the guard, in the open guard of Sakuraba, switching off his hips there, looking for some angles again. PJ Barch drops down onto that right leg. Left leg, sorry. I think PJ is looking for a straight foot lock or an Aoki lock. He slipped the heel out last time and then kind of chose not to finish it. Right now, he's just using it to keep Sakuraba constantly on the move. 
in defensive mode. Sakuraba <laughs> spinning out of control. He's having a laugh out there. Back on their feet. I think we can expect PJ Barch to turn up the volume a little bit in the second half of these eight minutes. You know what, Stu? I'd like to really see PJ go for the neck there so he doesn't have to break, potentially break anything. Right now, he's hips are high. Pass on the right hand side of Sakuraba. Sakuraba trying to retain guard position. Into full guard now. Sakuraba starting to breathe a little heavier. Yeah, BJ Barch has kept him moving, kept him active for sure. Stop the clock there and reset it back. Reset it the back. But for the most part, if there's a reset, when it gets dangerous on the edge of the match, we try our best to have them in the same position they finished on the edge of the mat. If that's not possible, the referee will have them stand. Halfway through this second bout here now, Jay Bart still the sample, the first man out for Team 10th Planet. Kazushi Sakuraba, the second man out. Jiho for Team Sakuraba. Well, the pressure from PJ is really, really draining on the legend because there's Shaka right here. But he's, he's working hard to keep his guard. He's got a nice butterfly half guard here. The shoulder pressure from PJ, though. I can't imagine what that must feel like. Yeah, he's got both of the shoulders of Sakura on the mat here now, which means he's really nowhere to go. Yep, past the guard completely now, right into side control. Heavy on top is PJ Barch. Threaten that left arm, double wrist lock. Sakuraba sensed the danger though, moved quickly. Yeah, a little pop-up bridge there from Sakuraba. But like you said, Grant, we could see PJ Barch keep this pressure on and try to find the back. Yeah, and I think Sakuraba, after seeing that first match, is definitely aware of that and not looking to give any back exposure here. But if he does that, he's gonna have to watch his arms instead. Yeah, PJ looking for the armbar here. Hips heavy on top now. And left arm of Sakuraba in danger. PJ Bart trying to isolate it. Oh, he's looking for the Kimura on the other side now. Yep, straight top. Underneath it. Let's see what he can do with this. Oh, Bridging trying to find some space. He does. It's out of danger for now. PJ Bart still on top. Look at that right arm of Sakuraba. And given his illustrious career and fight experience, Sakuraba here is really showing what it is to be a legend. He's using all his wit and all his guile against a prime athlete here to survive. Oh, yeah. And there we go. Oh, amazing escape by Sakuraba. Good scramble there from Sakuraba, threatening the right leg of PJ Barch here. PJ back on top here. Sakuraba cool as a cucumber. PJ easily passes the double under sweep right there. Uh, the side mount on the other side of Sakuraba drops. Going on to the neck for a moment there. Thought he was looking for the chin strap. Yeah, maybe the north-south. He's, he's on the front headlock. He's looking for a dars right now. There we go, PJ Barch. He has the dars. Can he sense you in? There's just over one minute left in the clock in this bug. Catch his leg, catch his leg, catch his leg. 60 seconds and counting. Can Kazushi Sakuraba survive? If he does, he manages to take PJ Barch out of the equation. If he doesn't, PJ Barch has to step in for a third match in a row. You can see the expression on PJ's face. He looks pretty exhausted, but he's going for it. I think the heat and humidity here in Yokohama has affected a lot of these fighters from abroad as well. Yeah, it is sticky out here, and the sweat comes thick and fast. Sitting down heavy into this now. Oh, look at that squeeze. Yep, PJ Barch has got his 
puts down arms cinched in. He's, he's giving some space here, back up. I think Sakuraba survives this though. 10 yeah, seconds. He's out. Still with the pressure on top, PJ Barr's threatening one arm after the other. Sakurawa manages to find guard position momentarily, but onto that left leg, PJ Barr sees eight minutes out. Both men will leave the bat. I think we can take that as a nod to the legend, Grant. Yeah, that was an amazing performance from Sakuraba and from PJ. Great sportsmanship, mutual respect here. What a privilege for PJ to be able to compete with a legend in Japan. Surely, it surely is. Kazuzu Sakuraba, PJ Barch, grapple to an eight minute draw. Here at Yokohama Arena, Quintet 4 continues on. We have just two minutes before the next team members step out. I was really impressed with Sakuraba's ability to sense danger and make adjustments before anything was locked in too deep. It shows the craftiness of the IQ wrestler. Yep, he has such awareness. And that only comes with experience over the years, just constant, constant training. Constant out with that and into this, Richie Martinez steps onto the map for Team 10th Planet in the Jiho position. The second member of 10th Planet onto the map. And how about this, Grant? This is a rematch years in the making, Stu. Let's see if Richie can get his revenge on Hysum. Hysum blitzed him the last time they were out at Quintet with a uh, very fast armbar. Yep, we were talking about this earlier. We were kind of secretly hoping that this rematch would happen, and it has. There's the bell. Aggressive collar tie. Oh, 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 Richie didn't really like that. No. Hysum feeling the hype. Yep. Back in his home base of Japan. Hysum Rita the giraffe. Hype. 50 years of age. Born and bred in Ghana, but Japan is his second home. He was with Carpe Diem before he moved stateside. Now he would be Team Bulls, of course. And for anybody not aware of how this played out, Hansen Rita was booked for Team Sakuraba before Team B Team Bulls entered the chat. Richie Martinez kind of shoved to the ground there by Hysum, playing guard now. Hysum has very, very powerful passing, very aggressive. Where most people would stop, he goes two, three steps further. It's one of his strongest weapons from top is that aggressive passing. I suddenly, of course, Fight. on the runner-up team at Queen Quintet 2, and he absolutely blazed through the first round into the second round, and a star was born that day, Grant. Undoubtedly, and, and he has continued to grow from there, um, submitting the legend Cyborg of Rayu at uh, the ADCCs, training at the B team, developing skills. He used to have a weakness um, in terms of, of leg locks, uh, but he's worked on that a lot. So he's a complete fighter now. Yeah, he does like a knee bar or two, does our high Sam Rita. We also saw him in Quintet Fight Night 4 up in Akita, snowy North Japan in a singles match. Took a win over 10th Planet Wizard, Kyle Chambers, back in 2019. Most recently we've seen Hi Sam Rita taking bronze and who's number one championship 2021. Also third place in IBJJF American Nationals Nogi. 2020 in the absolute division. Years ago, the young Hysum that we saw was super aggressive, just filled with adrenaline going in there, snagging toe holds, knee bars, arm bars really fast. But this new Hysum, he's, he's calm, he's technical. It's almost like we're looking at a different fighter. Yep, I was really expecting that here today. A completely different fighter. Look at that beautiful pass. Oh! All oh, the pressure now from High Sun This is the same position as the first fight. Oh, the Richie gets on top. The Maids that armbar. Look at that. Man handled Richie Martinez for a moment there. Richie has learned to evade that armbar quickly. High Sun right back on top. Just powering in there into the top position. Some leader. Boogie Man's another 
Droplet that stays very calm under pressure and he's able to think his way out of situations. He began his training under Eddie Bravo, when he was still a blue belt, awarded black belt by Eddie in 2015. Now he runs 10th planet San Diego. I think Heisem's controlling that bottom arm of Richie. I think he's trying to look for a triangle from the top. But we'll see, he lets go of it briefly. Heisem's got five minutes to try to even the score here. He might sink to this threat in there. He dropped down onto the arm there. <laughs> Richie Martinez scrambles out. Good escape from the boogeyman. Bit of a time stop there. Unintentional, but a little blood from the mouth of Richie Martinez. Just checking in there, our referee. Richie Martinez is an MMA veteran of almost 10 fights, I believe. So seeing his own blood should be... No oh, my goodness. Oh. oh, that elbow. Yeah, I didn't see the elbow, but I saw him grimace at that moment. And that explains it. Seeing that on the instant replay, man, that explains why that sweep was so easy. He was, he was rocked, perhaps. Yeah, he took quite a strike there. And as you know, when it's your elbow, you don't, you don't necessarily feel it yourself because there's so few nerves there. Back into the action here now. Five and a half minutes elapsed. More pressure from the top, from the giraffe. His knee is over the right arm now of Richie Martinez. I think he's looking for a triangle, Stu. Just a premonition I have. Richie trying to find some space. Maybe Kumar on the other side. Look at that pressure from Heisen. He's so long. But when he gets on top, he just squishes down. He gives you zero space to breathe. Halfway through this bout now, Heisen Rita on top, looking firmly in control at the helm. And look at that top control from Heisen. Yeah, that's some solid chest to chest there. Richie's got an arm in. He will be trying to frame up as soon as he can, but staying so relaxed and heavy on top. The Ghanaian. Grant, what do you want to see Boogeyman do here? He's doing the right thing in trying to keep his elbows close to his body and uh, limit any exposure here. But look at Heisen just using his power to separate that elbow from the body. Richie kind of just has to survive here. It's going to be really hard to escape. He's kind of gesturing to the ref, maybe. And Heisen is just holding, and that works. Well, this is the thing with the Shido's, Grant. You know, you can both get a Shido. You can get a Shido even if you are in a, what looks like a dominant position, if you're not actively working to finish. And of course, if you are playing, stalling on the bottom, then you're also at risk of receiving a Shido. I don't know about standing him up from the full mount position. I think Heisem had a really good position there, and he was just, he had tried submission attempts before that um, Richie was able to slip out of, so I think he was being more patient in his last attempt, but it is what it is. Let's see how he, he works from here. There you go, Richie, that butterfly is there. Richie, the double butterflies in there, sitting up, head to head now with Heisem Rita. Yeah, these guys are playing that interlocking finger game. <laughs> Here we go, starting to get quite aggressive now with the pushing. Referees will not take any of that at all, Grant. No, and that's that's a theme of Quintet here, right? It's not the brutal pride era that Sakuraba went through as a young man, right? This is, it's, it's a heated grappling competition, but it's not about violence and bloodshed. You know? It's about sportsmanship and sport here. Heisem, he, he's looking, looking like he's, he's a little bit irritated out there here today. I haven't seen this side of him on the Quintet map before. I think he's a little frustrated and, and kind of getting aggressive here. You might want to dial that back a little bit. It's good to be aggressive, but this is professional grappling after all. Oh. Giving the Shido. 
It's a high sum leader and allowing Yelchi Martinez to choose the restart position. There's two positions they can choose from, and Yelchi has opted for starting in the mount immediately. Framing up with those long arms and legs, High San Rida back on the attack in the top position. And pass the guard of Boogeyman. Less than two minutes to go. I wonder how High Sim's going to attack here. Richie Martinez staying very calm, bottom half guard, hand fighting. They've both been utilizing that, that interlocking of the fingers. I think that's what initially got Heisen kind of mad. Mm -hmm. Now, I would not be surprised if Heisen decides to try and roll over and grab that Kimura. He does love to attack with that, to find the back, to find the, the double wrist lock, the Kimura finish itself, or just work to any other submission or position from that. Yeah, you're right, Stu. At this point, with one minute left, he's not really going to be able to pass the guard, mount, take the back, and set up a submission. He's going to have to roll into, like you said, a Kimura, or maybe a toe hold or a knee bar, or even a guillotine, maybe, without passing the guard. 50 seconds on the clock. We could see both of these men be removed from the match. Should this time run out without a submission? Oh. Here's the flexibility of Boogie Man. Look at that from Richie. Can he get his revenge over the giraffe here today at Quintet 4? That was a great look at the shoulder from Richie. He has some slips out there. Both men sweating buckets here in Yokohama. 25 seconds on the clock here. Still anybody's game. Richie Martinez finds himself for the first time up in the top position here. You can hear Eddie Bravo. No. 10, seconds. 10 seconds. It looks like both men will have to step off into the full close guard there. High Sam Rida. Richie Martinez. And High Sam Rida. Grapple to a draw. Eight minutes. A little bit of blood. A little bit of aggression and aggravation. But let's hope that that all stays on the mat. Things getting very interesting here now, Grant. Heisam Rita out. Heisam leaving the mat kind of without shaking Richie's hand. That's not the kind of sportsmanship we want to see here. He, he was kind of the backbone of this team, right? He was hyped up as the guy who was going to carry this team, and he's very you know, down about that loss, but... Uh, Possibly letting his emotions get the better of him out there still. As we continue on, Gio Martinez will step onto the mat in the Chukang position, number three for Team 10th Planet. And that means Daisuke Nakamura, the Fukusho position for Team Sakuraba, will face him. Team 10th Planet, Gio Martinez. Gio Martinez, right in it. 65 kilograms exactly. Daisuke Nakamura weighed in at 75.4, so that's a 10 kilogram difference. But the time in the clock will be the same. Eight minutes, there's the bell. A slap and a bump. There's that jumping guillotine attempt that Gio really likes. Pulls guard right away. He was just so wily. He's so clever. He's so focused. In his brain, he's got a million different moves chained together, and he's already started the attack. He's on the toe already. Yeah, he's got the toe hold. Guys, Nakamura trying to roll out of it. Safe for now, but staying on the attack. Freakazoid. Joe Martinez, I thought, six years of age. That's going to come here 43. Kimura, way back in the day, took the U-File style S tournament silver. And when you talk about crafty veterans on this uh, Team Sakuraba, Nakamura Daisuke is definitely one of them. Um, he went the full eight minutes with PJ Barch at one of the previous quintet shows. His submission defense, his ability to recognize danger is really top class. Yeah. yeah he's, he's an exciting fighter for sure. Gio has a very strong Kimura though. 
Actually one of Daisuke Nakamura's favorite moves, but Gio's in deep on that Kimura. He's fully mounted him now. He is. Oh, he's trying to step over the head. Nakamura defending well so far, but he is far from out of danger. Inverting now, Gio Martinez. Gio used a very similar setup to finish Gregor Gracie in the past. Nakamura staying calm, staying tight. Oh, beautiful transition to the back from Gio. Finds the back. Does the freak is out now. He'd be looking to slide his wrist onto the chin. And he's got plenty of time to work here. Yeah, time. Less than two minutes elapsed already. And a solid back mount position for Gio Martinez. Beat Eddie Cummings in the final of EBI 10 via armbar to retain the bantamweight title. 10th Planet Oceanside, California, representing Martinez, EBI 1 and 10. 45 pounds champion, EBI, EBI 2. 135 pounds champion. Yeah, the list of accolades goes on and on for Gio Martinez here. I just love his and his brothers and all the 10th Planet guys, their attitude coming in here. They don't overthink things. They study the other guys, but really they just go in and chase that so much. Just hunt it down. They're not, not thinking too deeply into the, the minute details of things. Yeah, they're here to get the submission and show their style of jujitsu, the 10th Planet style, which is so unique and, and so well known throughout the world. Daisuke Nakamura, also an MMA veteran, 34, 24 and one. His record, he has been through some wars in the day. Oh, look at this, he's under the nose. A lot of pressure here. That is incredibly, excruciatingly painful for Daisuke Nakamura. Grimacing, can he escape this run? Oh, that was so close, too. The amount of pressure that Gio put on the face with that lock. But Daisuke Nakamura is as tough as they come. Under the bottom of the nose as well, that is so uncomfortable. Makes your eyes water. Gio Martinez with that full body log. Nakamura trying to address it for a moment there, but immediately had to go back to defending the arms. Yeah, if he uses his hand to try to work on that triangle, uh, Gio's going to come under the neck, so I'd like to see... Uh, oh, he's, there he's going again with the face lock. He's on that short choke now. Nakamura staying calm. Look at the heart and the defense. Nakamura. Nakamura just constantly in and out of danger. Is Gio looking for a twister here? I think he could be. There is a bit of torque on the oh neck. Goodness, look at that. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Nakamura. Oh, my word. Again, in and out of danger. Wow. Martinez constantly offering up dilemmas. Nakamura is in a better position here now. He's got one of the legs inside, which means he could potentially unlock that triangle. Looks like he's focusing very... Oh, my goodness. That was very close. Gio was so close to getting under the chin there. That's a good three minutes now that Gio's been on the back of Dice. Get up on your left elbow. Keep him on his side. Get up on your left elbow. It looks like just a matter of time here, but you can never count out Daisuke Nakamura. Where there's a will, there's a way, and he looks for it constantly. He's trying to clear... If he, can get, if he can clear the knee or the shin on one side of Gio, we might see him find some space to work with. I'd like to see Gio get back to the body triangle and isolate an arm of Daisuke Nakamura's if he could. I think he'd be able to get under the chin easier that way. Daisuke Nakamura being very diligent with his defense here, though. Yeah, yeah, he's no stranger to this position, but he's getting constantly worn oh. down by Gio. He's going for the white belt leg lock here with the cross legs. He is, he's going for it, but to no effect so far. If it does start to crank on, we could see Gio 
give up on the neck for a moment there and just push the back of his head. But there's been no purchase on it by the looks of it. The right ankle of Gio safe for now. Oh, Gio might be entering the truck here. He might be looking for a leg. Half strength, perhaps. Nakamura in on the Kimura, though. What an exchange. Oh, the elbow slipped out, though. He's got to get out of this back attack while he can. 90 seconds left on the clock in this bout. Keisuke Nakamura. Fourth out for Team Sakuraba. They only have one member left. Gio is the third member out for Team 10th Planet, so they have a huge advantage. Yeah, even with that advantage, though, look at the aggression from Gio Martinez. He wants this submission, and he's going for it really hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's leaving the, the rest of the match to his teammates. He's not on his mind. But with one minute, let's see what he can do. Back into a horrible position now for Daisuke Nakamura. Gio Martinez digging deep. Looking to pull out that inner warrior. The inner 10th planet warrior. Find the neck. Find the submission. Make Nakamura tap out here. Tight body lock. Tight left arm. Around the face and the neck. 30 seconds on the clock here. Full defensive mode for Daisuke Nakamura. She was looking for it though. 15. Daisuke Nakamura looks like he's going to survive the onslaught of Gio Martinez here, Grant. Yeah, I think you're right, Stu. Here's the bell. Wow. That was something else. Daisuke Nakamura smiles and nods at Gio. He was like, yep, you completely outfoxed me. But still, to survive eight minutes with Gio Martinez on your back, yeah, that, that deserves an award in itself. Yeah, that speaks to the durability and craftiness of the veteran Daisuke Nakamura. What a great match. Gio Martinez, of course, one of the stars of Quintet 2 and on the winning team of Quintet 2, tapping out Aysan Rita after he had finished his brother Richie before him in an absolutely historical moment. I was kind of hoping that we might see that rematch as well, Gio and Aysan. Yeah. Maybe one day. So that leaves us with Team Sakuraba sending out the Taisho position. Man, Harry Gretsch, Harry Kimura. He weighed in at 92.3 kilograms yesterday. Australian native going up against the Hook Show. Member, the fourth team of Team Planet. Both of these guys are huge. Harry Gretsch standing at 6'2. Kyle Bame, 6'3. Kyle Bame weighed in three kilograms heavier than Harry Gretsch. But you are right, Grant Bogdanov. These are two units. Straight into the action. Kyle Bame trying to pull down the head of Harry Gretsch. Full close guard position now for Kyle. He's gotta, he's gotta be the Kyle, 36 years of age from California, the US of A. ADCC West Coast champion, Polaris heavyweight champion. First place BJJ Fanatics GP 2019. Two first place in the King of the Mats Invitational 2019. Also, favors the outside heel hook in competitions, does Kyle, but of course that's not an option here today. I'm sure he has plenty of other options. Look at this, already showing the flexibility of his hips. Yeah, he's looking to play that high guard that 10th Planet is known for. Ooh, and here he's out. Kyle is one of these athletes among athletes. He's competed in rock climbing, cross country running, wrestling, basketball, track and field, soccer, American football. He was doing MMA uh, when he joined Team 10th, oh, sorry, the Team 10th Planet gym. In 2013 to improve his grappling skills and he wanted to focus on no gi training rather than the gi so that he could fit it into his MMA style but he has since become an absolute star in the professional grappling world. 
Yeah, and if you look at this guy up close in person, the broadness of his back is just crazy. He's a top-class athlete and very skilled as well. Opposing him, Harry Kimura, Gretsch. It may or may not surprise you to know that Harry Kimura Gretsch has won two of his MMA fights via Kimura. And just to round things off and keep in line with the gym he teaches at, he's also won via kick once. And his MMA debut via punches. He teaches at Kick Punch Summit in Australia. The perfect MMA record, if you ask me. Yeah, he's, he's shown it all so far, but here today, showing it on the Quintet mats, making his Quintet debut here at Quintet 4. Harry Gretsch is a pupil of the one and only Josh Barnett, who is in Japan right now. Yep, the first ever to be graded under Josh Barnett. Here we go, action starting to get a bit more frantic now. He rolled for that Kimura, ended up exposing his back. Now he's kind of looking for that Sakuraba versus Henzo Gracie style of Kimura. Well, this is something that Bane would have been expecting. Absolutely. But having said that, when you know somebody's strength and you know what to expect, it doesn't always mean you can stop it. Bane just released his grip. Oh my gosh, look at this, Harry Gretsch, amazing work with that Kimura. This is really good top pressure now. He has got Kyle Bame under a lot of pressure. Yeah, I was not really expecting to see this kind of situation this early in the match here. Five minutes left to go, Harry Gretsch in a great position on top. Ooh, nice recovery from Kyle Bame. Swelling on the right eye of Harry Gretsch. I was thinking that he looks to be having trouble seeing clearly. That was from maybe a knee. Obviously something unintentional, but let's hope that that doesn't affect the action here. Looking off his back now, full close guard, Kyle Bay. Wants it to control the posture. One on one, two on one, one arm to the other. Look at the forearms of Harry Gretsch. Sakuraba was talking about this earlier in the pre match video. Yeah, Sakuraba spoke on how strong this guy is and how big his hands are. He's got to pour on the pressure here, though, because even if he. The, the, the onus is on him right now to submit. If he doesn't submit here, then their team loses. And Kyle Snope. just has to survive. Snope. All the pressure on Harry Gretsch here now. The last member, Taisho. Fifth position of Team Sakuraba. Kyle Bain in the fourth position. So they still have a man fresh mat side there, Amir Alam. Should. Harry Gretsch take the victory. We'll have to step up. One shoot a piece. Kyle Bame on the back right now, attacking the turtle here. Harry Gretsch went for that Kimura again. He scrambled. Gonna re reset the position in the center of the mat. That eye looks really bad on Harry Gretsch. That's very unfortunate. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be bothering him so far, but uh, it's difficult to know for sure. The action restarts over the Quintet logo, Kyle Bain on the back. Body lock. Hand fighting here from Harry Gretsch, looking to avoid the choke. Stay on his back. Just Almost stay like on he was back. beating him there. Yeah, interesting okay. tactic from there Harry Gretsch. Oh. Right onto the outside there. Just for a there moment. Stay on body lock. Kyle working that back pressure. Harry struggling here. Two and a half minutes to go on the clock. 
He's got a tall task ahead of him. He's got to get out of this position and then submit Kyle if he wants his teammate, uh, his team to have a chance of advancing. Yep. And all Kyle has to do is to keep the pressure, keep attacking, and let that clock run down, which will mean ten Team 10th Planet go through to the finals. Two minutes, Kyle, you got this. Two minutes. Over the ankle, toes up. Over the ankle, toes up. And in the Stay finals, Stay on his back. Keep squeezing. the winning team will face either the B-team Bulls, led by Craig Kyle. Jones, or Team Polaris, led by Gregor Gracie. Put him yeah, we still have a lot of great matchups and potential matchups to look forward to tonight. 135, Kyle. There you go. Watch it, watch right it. now, it's all it Team 10th squeeze Planet. Right squeeze, squeeze. 125, PJ, Gio, and now Kyle Bain. They've all shown amazing back control with the body triangle. Really tenacious attacks here. Kyle Bain may be looking to transition to an arm. Or get on top. Harry's out. Harry's got one minute. He's, he's baiting him. He's lifting his arms up. He's baiting the guy to grab the Kimura. <laughs> he wants him to come up so he can grab his wrist. There he goes there for it again. Rolls for it. Less than 60 seconds now. Calvin, of course, knows exactly what Hattie Gretsch is looking for here. <laughs> this is quite interesting. Calvin keeping his distance, keeping a nice gap there. Oh, oh we're, we're to the kicks now. <laughs> Things get aggressive. Time stop. Referee's not going to be happy about that. Either. No, that was kind of nasty. It's okay. We got this one anyway. The Shido's not going to matter. The Shido's not going to matter, Kyle. Hey. Aussie is the American. As the clock runs down, ticking closer and closer to Team 10 Planet. Moving through to the finals here in Quintet 4. Two shooters now. The third one means. Hi! Lose. Nobody's in. Throws up the leg. Tiny there. Let's go. Arm. Trying to blast through. Yeah, he's really trying his best to try to pull something out of the bag here, but with 10 seconds left, it looks like he may not be able to do it. Time is the enemy of Hardy Gretsch and Team Sakuraba. As again, Kyle Bain throws up. Oh my God, the left leg. And there it is. It is all complete here in the first round match. Team 10th Planet progress. Proceed to the finals. What a performance from Team 10th Planet against a very game Team Sakuraba. DJ Box doing the job with the rear naked choke. Richie Martinez after that. And his younger brother Gio. Kyle Bain brought up the rear and took the victory, leaving Amir Alam nice and fresh going into the finals run. Yeah, look to see Amir Alam uh, early in the lineup for the next match. That's a good point. The teams have to prioritize any members who didn't go on the mat in the first round first in the finals. So Amir Alam will be First to step out in the finals later. For the official announcement. Thank you, Lenny Hart. Team 10th Planet, it is. Taking out Team Sakuraba. Some exciting matches there and some some aggression that we haven't seen before on the Quintet match, Grant. Yeah, you know, it, it is a sport at the end of the day, and it's a competition. There's a lot of testosterone. These guys get heated up, but, uh, you know, it's good to see them all shaking hands here and showing that good sportsmanship that we like here at Quintet. Yep. Now, we talked about this before. There's a lot of eyes on the B-Team Bulls, but don't sleep on Team 10th Planet. The freaks don't sleep.
take a breather, gather their thoughts, talk about what's coming up next. Who's coming up next? They have been champions in the past. Will they do it again here today? They are here for that very reason, Grant. You are right.